pick this up, pick this vlog up in the evening uh, and talk about Iceland and Canada. Well, I already talked about Canada. Let's talk about Iceland. Um, but got to head to work, so I'll pick this up right now. So the third place I went was Iceland, and that place was awesome. But a little uh, in between events happened. Uh, so I booked my or I booked our tickets to Germany separately. So the tickets were actually um, from U.S. to London, and then London to Iceland, and Iceland to Canada, and Canada to the U.S. But I I booked the tickets to Germany separately. So flights from London to Germany, and Germany back to London. Now, what I didn't realize was that since I booked them separately and they were on a different airline, they were on EasyJet, uh, which services, you know, smaller airports and short flights around Europe, um, we couldn't just have our bags transferred. Uh, and this was, this was short-sighted on my part. I didn't even think about it. Um, but we couldn't have our bags transferred. So what we had to do was get our bags from uh, check luggage once we flew from Munich to London. Then, after we got our bags, well, before getting our bags, we have to go through customs, get our bags, and then the flight from London to Iceland was in the other terminal. So we flew out of Gatwick in London. Our flight was out of the north terminal. We flew into the south, tor uh, the south terminal. And, oh man, it was, we had one hour between the estimated time of arrival for our flight from Munich to London to the time of departure for, for our flight from London to Iceland. We had one hour. We took off late from Germany. We ended up arriving early to London uh, by about... I want to say it was just a few minutes. We took off like 10 minutes late. We uh, arrived a few minutes early. From the time of arrival, we went through customs, uh, managed to skip the whole line because we talked to talked to one of the uh, representatives or whatever you want to call them there and said, look, we're trying to catch a flight. We have to get to the front of the line because no, no offense to anyone else, um, but we had some some issues with the flight that came in at the same time as ours getting caught up in customs with. So I didn't. Even, I mean, I wouldn't expect it to be expect it to be an issue. But there was a flight from Israel that had come in, and I kid you not, the first four people that went through the customs line from that flight were stopped and questioned outside of the normal customs line because if you've been through customs you know that it's normally just like you know uh why are you coming how long are you staying uh where are you coming from where are you going etc well it just it should just take a few minutes and that's how long it usually takes but for whatever reason they felt the need to question these people further so with the four people that normally were there to pass the pass question people and pass them through customs all four of them left to question these people further i don't know why i i don't i don't know if there was something suspects actually suspect about each of these people but the first four people that went through the line they took out for further questioning so we went up to the front of uh went up to the rep representative that was passing people off to the, each individual line. We're like, look, we need to get through this as quickly as possible. She said, okay. So she found us another representative, let us skip the entire line. It, I, was in, I was incredibly gracious to her. Uh, we would not have had any chance of making it through if she hadn't helped us. Um, but she got us through representative. The representative helped us right away. There was no issues with it. We got through customs. We ran our way. We had to run all the way to customs. Oh my gosh, it was the longest run of my life. Um, and if you know anything about airport planning, they make the line or they make the walk from the gates to 
uh, baggage claim really long because the longer you walk, the less time you actually have to wait for your bags. And people are more satisfied when they have to wait less time for their bags. So what do they do? They make the walk longer so you're waiting less time. Well, in this situation, having a longer walk was the last thing that I wanted. But we ran the entire way to the customs, got through customs, went to the baggage claim, got our bags, ran to the train that went to the other terminal, ran to the, uh, the, the uh, check-in counter, got checked in, gave them our bags, they phoned the plane, said, hey, we got two bags that are coming, um, so don't leave without these bags, don't leave without these people. Got on the plane with 10 minutes to spare and made it to Iceland. Problem is, our bags didn't come with us. Oh no, and man, I missed my exit. Um, I was supposed to go over here because I need to stop at Best Buy because my refrigerator is leaking. And I'm sorry if I'm talking really fast, but I got a lot of stuff on my mind. <laughs> All right, so we get to London. Um, my bag ends up coming in on the, the only other flight of the day. There's one other flight that gets in around midnight. I go pick up that, that bag once that comes in, but my wife's bag does not come in. And honestly, like I'm, I'm okay with going another another day without my bag. I brought some clothes. I'm a little more okay with being a little dirty for a little extra longer. But her bag didn't didn't come in with that. Uh, when and the thing that sucked was that Iceland is cold. Now it wasn't any colder than man. Where am I going? You know what? I'm an idiot. I actually think that. I was supposed to go an extra... No, 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 no. I was supposed to turn here. It's over here. Man, I don't go this go to this area very often. I keep forgetting where things are. Especially because it's really confusing. The, uh, like, crossover ramps are not in a normal position. Uh, what was I talking about? So... Ah, yes. So, we were dressed for the airplane ride. Like, we weren't, we weren't dressed for where we were going because we were expecting, you know, we'd go, we'd get on the plane, we get off the plane, we go to our hotel, and we change. No problem, right? Well, Iceland is about the same temperature as Germany, but it's so much more windy because that's an island. It's a lot farther north, but it's along the water, and whenever you're along the water as an island, you're going to get some winds. So, Iceland was cold, and it's just like, ah, it's... It's a different kind of cold, you know. Whenever you get below freezing, it's always going to be cold. But then you got different kinds of colds, and some ki kinds of colds are worse than others. And in Iceland, this cold was bad. So the first night we had a uh, Northern Lights tour scheduled um, in this awesome super jeep kind of thing. So they have these super jeep tours. And they're not jeeps, but they're modified SUVs that are made to be able to go off road and on ice and snow really easily. And we had this thing scheduled to go out and hunt the Northern Lights, get out to places outside of the city where there weren't a lot of lights and try to see the Northern Lights. And we were able to do this, but we weren't dressed for being out in the cold and standing out in the middle of nowhere on I, uh, on the you know, higher parts, higher elevations of Iceland. So my wife was not, not a happy camper. She was really cold. Um, I mean, she dealt with it pretty well. She wasn't really, like, upset or anything, but she was really cold. Uh, and I, I was cold, too. It was, it was bad. Uh, so, my, my bag came in later than that, as I mentioned, but her bag didn't come in until the afternoon the next day. So, we ended up having to cancel the tour that we had planned for that day. And, you know, things weren't getting off to a good start, but finally her bag came in on a flight in the afternoon. We picked it up. We went to the Blue Lagoon. So there's this lagoon. Iceland is known for its hot springs, right? So um, water that's come from uh, down in the depths of the water, <laughs> to depths of the water, depths of the earth, and it's really hot. And Iceland, oh man, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, I hate this. Why? Now I gotta go around in a circle again. Ugh. 
So, um, Iceland has a lot of volcanic activity. So there, you know, it's right along uh, continental divide, or uh, you know, two different continental plates on the North American plate and the Eurasian plate. Eurasian, Europe. I think it's the Eurasian plate. Um, so there's a lot of you know earthquake activity, volcanic activity, and what this causes is that there's a lot of uh, fissures. I think that's the word. Is that, is that a good word to use? Um, so that the you know the water from down in the depths of the earth can come up. So there's a lot of hot springs. Well, the Blue Lagoon is one of those. And it's uh, next to this geothermal plant where they use the you know the hot water and whatnot to generate generate electricity. I think I could be completely wrong about all this, so call me out if it is. But uh, and I also need to go over here so I don't make the stupid freaking mistake again. Ah. Anyways, the Blue Lagoon is awesome. It's got like natural minerals. It's really, really, really cool. It's like a naturally blue color. It's like 100 degrees year round. And so we go there, spend a few hours uh, just relaxing. It actually starts snowing while we're there and we're in 100 degrees water, so that was kind of cool. Um, but the next day we rescheduled the Super Jeep tour that we had planned to go around the island. That was awesome. Went around to some, uh, some cool uh, waterfalls. Went up on the glaciers. I got some video of that. I'll probably be playing that right now. It was just a, an awesome time. Iceland is really cool. It's completely unlike any other country you could ever go to. It's just so unique. It feels like another planet. Uh, I actually read that the one of the Apollo missions actually did some training on Iceland at the base of some volcano to give them the feeling of what it would be like on the moon, just because it's so weird. Uh, let's go get a water filter for my uh, refrigerator. B -b appliances. I probably shouldn't walk around with my helmet on. People will think I'm weird. Don't want people to think I'm weird. Actually, I'm just gonna leave it on now that I got it on and I'm in the middle of the store. Refrigerators. Microwaves, stoves, vacuums. Man, that one's purple. Where are water filters? Maybe over here? I don't know. Where'd they be? Um, K cup stuff. That's not gonna help me. I need freaking water filters. Anyone work at Best Buy? Where am I gonna find some water filters? Alright, probably should take my helmet off and talk to this guy, let him know I want a water filter. Can I find a water filter for a refrigerator? Oh, uh, um, I'm looking for a water filter for a refrigerator. Do you know which one it is? It's a uh, Frigidaire Pure Source 3. At least that's what it says the on the top. only ones we would have. Pure Source 3. Looks to be correct. All right, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, let's put my helmet back on. I'm super weird. I'm walking around Best Buy with my helmet on. I should take this thing back off, right? I don't want to be weird. Think I'm weird? Guys, you think I'm weird? Yell out if you think I'm weird. Yeah. I'm done here, guys. I got myself a water filter. Now I can have clean water without my refrigerator leaking fluid all over the floor. So it's a weird thing about a water filter. Once this stuff's working, it like blocks all water. So all the water freaking leaks onto the floor. Now my kitchen's all wet. And my water's not clean. It's stupid, right? It's terrible. People are probably laughing at me because I'm talking to myself. I don't really care. Ask me if I care. It's so easy. Why are people yelling? These guys crazy. These guys cray cray. Oh man, I left my keys in my pocket. Keys in my pocket. That's gonna be a song, right? All right, let's start this up. I don't even remember what I was talking about anymore. Something about Iceland. So Iceland. Uh, yeah, the next day I scheduled a super jeep tour, uh, which is what we were supposed to do the day before. But we had to cancel that because my 
my wife's luggage hadn't come in. So we rescheduled that, went around the island, saw some waterfalls, went up on the glaciers. Yeah, it was just awesome. And I just realized I already talked about that stuff. Uh, what else did we do? Went some of the good food places. I don't know. Iceland was just a really cool place. Like I said, feels like another planet. But never would like be a place that you would normally plan to go. But definitely recommend going there because it was really, really cool. I already talked about Canada, so I don't need to talk about that again, but honestly, I could not pick a place out of all the places that I went that was my absolute favorite. I loved every single place that we went to, and I would go to all of them again. I think maybe if you pushed me really hard on what I liked the most, I'd probably get the top two, and that was the dog sledding and the super jeep tour, like the full day tour that we did when we went up on the, the glacier and whatnot. It was just super unique um, and awesome. So if you got any questions about any of those, if you live in any of those places and uh, have any opinions on them, let me know. Especially if you live in some of the unique places like random places of Ontario where we went dog sledding or in Iceland. Let me know. It was it was really, really cool and I really like those places. So I love traveling. I'm looking forward to going to more places in the future. Looking forward to meeting some mode vloggers all over the world. And uh, that's all I got for you guys. So be sure to subscribe if you're interested in uh, what I talked about. If you want to hear some of the stuff I vlog about in the future. If you want me to get over in the lane next to me because that's the lane that I have to be in to get home. Guys, just, I'm just looking for some feedback. So, yeah. Subscribe. Like this if you liked it. And, uh, see you guys in the next video. Peace. And breaking right now, San Antonio police say they have caught the so-called catch-me-if-you-can motorcyclist. Catch-me-if-you-can. Well, our detective's gone. him. He had a helmet cam strapped to his helmet and was driving his motorcycle between traffic uh, at a high rate of speed.